welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we take that midweek break, that hum day, to talk about some of the favorite things that we find exciting going on in the Linux world. It's not quite as gamey as our Saturday show, but um, sometimes a little bit of that might slip in. But this week, have you been looking for a hot new way to visualize disk usage? Flame graphs might be your answer, and our BFF, Microsoft, is finally killing old Skype on Linux. You know old Skype on Linux? Yeah, that mm-hmm. one, the one that works. Yeah, there's another DIY ARM netbook going around. This one doesn't involve a Raspberry Pi. And the Fox drops NPAPI extensions, except Flash. That junk just won't die. The already awesome Cody gets awesome err. Um, Cody 17 is a really major update for the, the software. Very good. And you can use the Raspberry Pi for a bunch of useful useful stuff. But if you don't like that, you can also use it to build a self-driving car for your goldfish. Mm-hmm. Can't <laughs> wait to take a bite of that later in the show. But let's get right into being positive in the freedom dimension. Indeed. This, uh, this news comes from The Verge. And they say you can build a laptop with open source components if you want a bad laptop. Well, that's giving it away right there in the title, isn't it, The Verge? But yeah, so this is a, a DIY project that you can get. Um, it's based on the Terrace I uh, modular hardware. You can see the boards right there in that picture. And you just buy all of that. You buy the um, 3D printed case. Or you can have one professionally made if you want. Uh, and it will basically give you a fully functional uh, laptop. Teeny tiny one. Uh, it's got an 11.6 inch screen. Uh, and the resolution's bad. It's just 1366 by 768. Uh, it's got a quad-core ARM64 chip. Uh, they don't specify which one, but I'm sure if you dig around, you well, can I mean, th- actually... There's like, also a 1080p variant of the monitor, too. So Yes, uh, which will run you for an extra, what was it, a hundred and something bucks? Probably about tree fitty. Um, yeah. Seriously, Strider, what are, you, what are your first, first thoughts about this? Um, some in some ways, it reminds me of the the MacBook Air that was released like maybe two years ago, which is basically a computer with a cell phone uh, CPU. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I don't I don't really understand with the, the target audience for that for that device. I mean, I get it; it's modular and uh, it may, you can build it yourself and all that kind of stuff. But I mean. Uh, can you use it to get actual things done? I, I don't know. Well, it it does run uh, full on Linux distributions. Uh, you you will though uh, because it doesn't have it doesn't support uh, hard drives or SSDs out of the box. Uh, you can make a module to support those if you want, or you will be stuck using SD cards and running an operating system off of SD card flash. Well, let's just say it makes. Hard drives look snappier by comparison. Well, that's absolutely true. My first thought when I saw this was like, man, does this thing come with like a fixie, a can of PBR, and a pack of American spirits? <laughs> you know, just, just to wrap, you know, and complete the um, trifecta there. But then I had to sit and I was like, listen, in all fairness, if I was like still in secondary school or somewhere around there, I would have probably been one of the kids. It was like, I- I've made my own laptop. I don't care if it's a bit rubbish. Uh, but listen, man. 242 wet stinky caches and that's if you want the whole kit i mean you can still 3d print your own case for that extra added jank but it definitely falls into the might buy one out of morbid curiosity price range yeah Yeah. and it's also it also makes me think of that laptop we spoke about uh, a couple weeks ago which was a lot cheaper it was 89 dollars i think Mm -hmm. it was Mm -hmm. very similar on on what it offers it has this arm cpu and you can run linux on it but it was a lot cheaper, so I don't know if yeah. you don't have an interest in building your own laptop, then yeah. you're basically buying the case at this price point. Hmm. Moving yeah. on. <laughs> hey man, Skype. The Skype you love is getting <clears throat> better. Oh, <laughs> download it for free today. Oh, what that that, that uh, electron wrap piece of note beta that you currently have, Microsoft. That one, good sir. Yep. 
But hey, they're like, uh, we're, we're moving away from that peer-to-peer to a modern, mobile-friendly cloud architecture that, I don't know, high NSA, how do you want to <laughs> <Web RTC. laughs> put that one together? But uh, yeah, the, they're getting rid of old Skype for what they do say here. I mean, they don't mention Linux. They say it's going away from Mac and it's going away from Windows. But I'm kind of looking at that, and you know, definitely part of me genuinely wants to believe that they're not that pants on head retarded as to kill the old actually functioning version version of Skype, which they didn't make that we have on mm-hmm. Linux. And uh, maybe they'll keep that service up until they sort that Electron wrap piece of nope, because the audio quality is genuinely, genuinely bad. There's a video we did, um, Pedro, not Pedro, uh, it was Jordan, myself, and Empty. We we kind of did a comparison between the two, and it it was really really bad. And if they're going to kill that version, it would be very nice. I know this would never happen. You know, if Microsoft would just like loosen up some of the restrictions on using the Silk Codec, because you can use it, just not for anything that you would use it for. Hmm? Uh, but could, could you use uh, could you use the Silk Codec with uh, WebRTC? That's the main concern here. Oh, well, well, if you used it for your own personal project, you never put it online or told anyone about it. Yeah, <laughs> it's proprietary. But yeah, no, it's... If this means what I think it means, because Microsoft, as usual, they're being very vague with what is actually happening. If all platforms are now using that uh, Electron no piece of... <clears throat> and they're using the WebRTC version, then this, in theory, makes it so everyone can go back to talking to each other, regardless of OS. In theory. Uh, We'll have to see just uh, how far that goes when March rolls around. Also, what's up with March this year? It's like everything is coming out in March. Yeah, and they they put a lot of effort, like not mentioning Linux in this article, and... I mean, they have released a couple updates for the uh, Skype for Linux Alpha, Two. which is basically the WebRTC. <laughs> but here, no mention at all, so we can't make only assumptions for what is going to happen in the future. And they don't even mention at all like the sound quality or video quality at all. It's all about the, those cool cloud features. It's like, oh, peer-to-peer is bad, Cl- cloud features whatever those are are awesome and yeah Strider, you gotta look at it this way you gotta be practical man i mean if you're doing peer-to-peer that's gonna make it like wicked difficult to like um hijack it and inject ads into your skype client yeah um mm-hmm. I, I don't know i mean it's something just we wanted to they wanted to get rid of the old stuff and just replace it with new stuff and that doesn't make it necessarily better no, I mean, it's genuinely, um, it, it, it's just not usable. What, what yeah. we currently have with Skype right now and what they have in their beta client, it is just, no, it, it's bad. And we don't know. It's speculation. But maybe it'll take up less space. Hmm? Uh-huh. Where is my disk space going? Um, I don't know, but I'm going to install an extra program to find out. Flame grass <laughs> for the file system. Yes, you can visualize what's numbing all of your SSD. Hmm. Okay, really? Um, something, uh, something NCDU on this one, baby gentlemen? I don't, I don't know about NCDU. Well, but, I mean, it's too bad that we don't have a tool to visualize their two sizes. Like, that would be shipped by, with, like, almost Linux, every Linux distros. We could name it after a huge tree, I don't know, like Baobab. Oh, wait, it does exist. Yeah, no, um, I'm totally with Strider on this one. Just uh, <laughs> look up Baobab in your distro's repos. It's this with more functionality. Uh, yeah, that, that uh, says... Well, that, something that, like that, this, Strider, uh, riddle me this. Uh, uh, how, shouldn't you know what's numbing everything? I mean, now, now, here's a fair thing. How did you find out about Plex having that 16 gigajoule cache folder? With Baobab. There you go. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I was running a, a low on space, and I run Baobab and said, "Okay, there, there is a huge folder here," and but here, the the, the guy who makes this script is all about the fl- fr- flame graphs, and <laughs> I don't know, he has a thing for it. Uh, there, he, he made another follow up article on the on this where he says, "Okay, flame graphs are awesome," and the the sunburst. Um, 
visualization you have on Baobab is not as good because it's just angles and you have to compare angles. It's, yeah, there's a lot of, well, the core of the, the script is just all about flame graphs. But that said, I find this, this script cool. If you want to run it on the server, like where you don't have a, a new UI, and you just want to put this in the, a cron job and just receive visual reports on your disk usage, that, that's a nice use case. In my day, we just ran DF and guessed, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, he actually gives you the, uh, at the, at the very top of the article, he says just run find forward slash dash ls, and it will give you the size it's taking up. But yeah, that's just uh, text. You don't get all they the nice write a flash visualization. For it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let's just, you know, let's just keep on perpetuating the piece of bloatware that is Flash. But to be fair to Mozilla, they're at least doing something to compensate for it. Uh, they are getting rid of all the NPA API plugins in Firefox 52. That means no Java, but they're keeping Flash around. Why? What are you doing? Just let it die. Um, now, what I'm really curious about is why they're keeping this this flash based on the NP API, which was, I mean, it was updated a few weeks ago by Adobe, but everyone wonder why. I mean, there is this uh, perfectly functional implementation based on the PP API, so what that's what's used by Chrome. Why not just shift? Everything. If you're going to sh uh, to keep Flash, at least make it use the the PP API plugin. That would make more sense. I mean, I can definitely see that. I was upset when they got the new Flash, especially for the movie, because I've kind of grown accustomed to TV Flash. But either, either yeah. way, they, they both need to know. But hey, look at it this way: silver lining, because if this affects you know any of your plugins, you know when NP API gets doped, uh, good. Stop using them. <laughs> but Cody's back, baby. Okay, so we've talked about like some of the the features that would be coming in Cody seventeen, and it's finally out. So we covered um, previously the, the the new web interface that's like really need to use on your tablet or smartphone. So I mean, you don't even need a, an app to use Cody in, on your to as a remote control on your phone because this, this uh, new web UI is so neat. Uh, there are a bunch of other stuff. Uh, the, the, the release notes didn't mention it, but I think uh, now you can control uh, Kodi uh, with uh, a joypad, like a regular uh, joypad. It, it's got a new, a new skin, also a new, um, new interface that looks very good. I mean, it's a pretty major update for, for this. Um, multimedia uh, center app mm. so if you're using it be sure to upgrade because this is like um, a very very good ver version and if i've been using the um, the beta and it's uh yeah very, it's uh, awesome stuff mm -hmm. right. um i'm big buck bunny we, we will never escape <laughs> that stupid monkey movie um <laughs> cody formerly xbmc haven't really looked at it since my plex days pedro yeah, I remember looking at it not too long ago because I was on Telegram and uh, a, a it was the Ubuntu podcast channel, if I'm not mistaken. And one of the hosts was having an issue with because he had a Steam box set up with Kodi and the uh, uh, Steam Big Picture mode functionality. But whenever he booted into Kodi first and then he tried to use uh, Steam Big Picture mode without logging out of the Kodi session... Uh, Pulse Audio was basically not recognizing the stream that Cody was using. Apparently, there was a function in Cody that uh, keeps that stream active. And as long as that stream is active in Cody, uh, nothing else can use it for some reason. It's like going back to the old Alsa days. Hopefully, they'll fix that at some point. But yeah, that's been my experience with it lately. Okay. <laughs> so, game over? Question mark, or has it just begun? Oh, it's about to restart. So a while back, we mentioned that there had been a settlement uh, regarding the PlayStation 3 Linux uh, debacle that happened a few years ago. And the class action lawsuit uh, 
meant that everyone who could prove that they had a PlayStation 3 and they wanted to use it for the uh, intents of running Linux, they were eligible for a $55 uh, refund. Of course, now uh, a particular judge in California has pretty much put the kibosh on that settlement and said, no, that's not good enough. Because among the reasons, I mean, it's just 55 for a console that costs 600 or 700 depending on where you were getting it from at the time. Yeah, no, that's not ideal. And there was also the fact that the lawyers were getting $2.25 million out of that for legal fees. Well, it's basically while- legal fees when they're wonking into that, and they also made it wicked difficult in order to get your refund yeah. with the article like this well all of this will be in our show notes but uh, you know for once i actually found my side my side myself on the side english friend on the side of a judge because it's like this class action bs uh, technical mm-hmm. workaround uh that's great because you know, the lawyers uh, the class action settlement was set up to it was like minimize the amount that would minimize the ability of people actually trying to get their 30 quid and to maximize so much money and uh I, oh what, what was what was the judge's name uh the, i don't think they mentioned oh, the she, she, she's definitely in there because I, I, I like creeped on her and i was like you go girlfriend <laughs> uh, i was really happy with this and uh it i don't think many people running other os as it was called at the time are still moaning about their 30 watt stinky caches but strider you you were completely no, nonplussed I mean, by this this is this is a shift to like some users were annoyed by by this and now it's pretty much just lawyer stuff so uh, i mean I, did, I hope this is the last time we hear about this ps3 and linux uh, stuff because it's we, there's not going to be anything happening right now right? except legal stuff. I mean, the people who actually use Linux on PS3s, I hope that they were like, smart enough uh, to not go on the PSN and run updates because, you know, they would be like actual scientists as opposed to like gamers who want to to do some... like. Ladies and gentlemen, Shredder just points out that he doesn't know actual scientists. I do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, the judge's name is actually Yvonne Rogers. I completely missed that one. My eyes came just over that bit. But yeah. And to compound the issues, uh, most of the users that were vying for the $55 refund, 25% of the 11,300 claimants were denied mm-hmm. those 55 bucks. So yeah, no, there's something fishy going on here. And good on Yvonne. Well Definitely played. digging that, but, you know, unfortunately, that was the death of gaming on Linux, right? Maybe not. <laughs> if that, no. if uh, good, fantastic, fabulous people over at Feral Interactive have anything to say about it, because Agent 47 marks his target. That's right. Hitman is coming to Linux. Oh, yeah. February the 16th. I, for one, welcome the second. Maybe you didn't know this. This is going to be the second Hitman title available for Linux. Um... One of the beautiful things we're able to do on the show, one of the reasons we wanted to start this show was if there's something like this broke out, because this is not a gaming show. Gaming show Saturday, um, yes. but this is too, too, really too good not to talk about, right? Yeah. Oh, I thought that's for a minute we were on Linux Gamecast Weekly. Yeah, if we were, you out. wouldn't be here. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, but yes, Feral is still on fire. I mean, the... They had like this maybe couple of weeks pause. They did they, they did make a short pause for Christmas, like in the New Year. But now they're they're back and they will they will ship like Hitman, and there will be like Dirt Rally just after that. So now I have to wonder what future titles can we expect for them because we we already knew that those two titles would be coming on Linux. But after those, I don't know. Uh, more Total War games? I mean, uh, as far as real-time strategy games published by Sega go, yeah, Feral has been porting them all. <laughs> uh, they'll they'll also probably do more of the Go series games, like Lara Croft Go <clears throat> and Hitman Go. <laughs> uh, no, th- those are just uh, Unity titles, so chances are Square Onyx will just push out the, um, mm-hmm. the port themselves. 
But yeah, no, I'm actually looking forward to more Codemasters Rally games. Maybe Codemasters had they had that brief stint with virtual programming. I hope they learn from that. Don't <laughs> just talk to Feral. We like Feral. Feral is nice. Yeah, yeah I thought Feral. That said, I mean, yeah, that that uh, dirt, uh, dirt showdown did perform a bit better than uh, Grid Auto Sports. But, I mean. Well, wow. I mean, games. Dirt Rally is definitely going to be a thing. Uh, I was kind of worried about that because I proclaim from the beer volcano in our heaven with a flying spaghetti monster and his newly appendages. It's like, well, the next game is Hitman. And they're like, and we're releasing Dirt. And I was like, I'm going to need some crow on this one. And they're like, but <laughs> not before we release Hitman first. And I was like, I'm yeah. always right. That's correct. Um, what are they going to plan next? Well, you know, after they get Final Fantasy ported, Hey, Ooh, I, I want me some of that. I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm just throwing that, that, that out that there on pure speculation well. just so I can come back to this clip. <laughs> <laughs> just go, I called it right then, right there. <laughs> but support Feral after you get done supporting us. Indeed. And actually, a lot of people supported us this week. But if you'd like to join uh, their particular ranks, you can go to LinuxGameCast.com. You hit the support. Forge slash support. support. Look, I changed it, son. Oh, you changed it. Wow. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So it's just forward slash support. That's awesome. So you can kick us a, a few shackles if you go shopping on Amazon. It won't cost you anything. It's just a teeny tiny bit of whatever final amount it is you purchased through our affiliate link will make its way back to us, which is awesome. You can also do a one-time donation or even a recurring donation through PayPal. Although if you are going to do recurring donations through PayPal, we suggest that you use a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast, where we're only, wow, 177, 97 patrons. Where did that come from? That that means that there's a new goal that has been reached. We have <clears throat> reached a particular goal. <laughs> Unfortunately, that goal is just per Saturday Night Train Wreck. We forgot what it was. And uh, what? No, 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 no. <laughs> 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 Hashtag LGC cares. Uh, no, man. That means uh, we're going to be opening up. Uh, now we got to do this the same way we did Linux Weekly Day the Wednesdays. We got to be fair with this. We can't go yeah. mixing things up. We got to close this month out at that level. But then again, you're going to be dealing with us, so there's probably going to be some streams. But what this will mean yeah. in the future is scheduled screen, screams. Let's just call them screams from now on. Done. <laughs> coin. Scheduled screams. Scheduled Done. screams on Tuesdays and probably Fridays. And we're going to be prototyping stuff, just playing games, not necessarily always games. Sometimes we can do game shows, talk shows, extra interviews. A lot of this is going to get opened up, and it's brilliant. One thing I, I forgot to thank uh, Steve last week. Because um, Steve, had a, he was talking to his purchaser at work, and he was like, yeah, I told our purchaser at work, you're going to shop through our Amazon thing. That's pretty guerrilla tactics. I, I enjoy that. <laughs> and I, I did notice, I mean, we don't get a ton from Amazon, but every little bit helps. And we got like, you know, 35 bucks. It's like, sweet, pretty good. But let's thank the beautiful, beautiful Patreons that are currently supporting us at this level. But we got a few new ones. We do. Uh, we have, well, we have a recurring one, uh, Mr. TechMad. He upped this pledge. Uh, we have Justin Chrysler. Uh, Adam Adamu. <laughs> that's, uh, th if that's your name, that's awesome. And Benjamin Parsons, which uh, is, uh, I believe, our latest Patreon to kick in some shackles out of the blue, which is uh, awesome. He, he pretty much rounded everything out because uh, <laughs> we, we get to it. He's like, hmm, that's not enough. That's not enough. All right. To, okay. Now now you guys are going to be crossing the screens. <laughs> now you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. yeah, thank you all very, very much. We do appreciate it. And hey, if we do close out February with over 175, yeah. yeah the, that, uh, that's right. What's we're gonna We're going to make Strider screen. teach me programming. How to, how to write and <laughs> listen, I'm dumb enough, but I'm going to be stupid on purpose for that as um, <laughs> Strider attempts, attempts to teach me Python. And if you've That's ever actually wanted to see like a mental disconnect and breakdown on air, that'll be the perfect time. But let's take a bite out of some pie. Yes. Yeah, it's a robot. Pie. So, so, so this, mm, this week pie. we have like two, two very useful projects made with the Raspberry Pi. So the first one is uh i mean it, it is a self-driving car okay okay uh, you got a fish driving something this is useless useless without like a shotgun turret on top 
<laughs> this is not sporting. This should be. This could be made better with with a turret. Yes, and, and there there is a, a far side cartoon in the article, so that makes it's made even more better. But it's basically a self driving driving car for your fish, and you put your fish in its fish bowl, and it will detect the position of the fish, and it will go in that direction. So. I don't know. Maybe maybe not a very nice thing to do to your fish. Or it's an awesome thing to do to your fish. It could give itself walkies. (laughs) Yeah, 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 right. I mean, it could be what's this like Hans from American Dad, right? Yeah. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's not his name, but I can't remember his name, so I'm just going to let you have that one. (laughs) Good. Because that'll let us talk about... Pie Inc. And no, it's not a squid. Yes, this is not a Japanese cartoon. We're talking about a Raspberry Pi name tag that uses an e-ink display, which is kind of neat. Isn't that right? Um, Mr. Josh King, Herr King, systems engineer, kind of goes through this, setting it up. This is one of ours, like, all right, pretty useless, but wicked neat, isn't it? I mean, yeah. I, I, I kind of booting up Josh's Linux name badge. <laughs> To which I will just say, um, hi, TSA. Um, <laughs> no, you need to, if you're going to <laughs> try and bring that through an airport, you need a really nice case to just say, oh, it's a thing. I can program it. It'll show my name. Because if you take it like that, the way you see it in the pictures, yeah, no, that's, is that I a mean, net <laughs> It's It's just basically a tablet. Without yeah. all the features. Well, I mean, it's another good use for the Raspberry Zero, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, it still yeah, doesn't I mean, beat that phone, that uh, phone thingy that we covered a few weeks back. That was awesome. It, it is using the Raspberry Pi Zero, so I, I like that that aspect. But still, it might be a bit heavy on your shirt. So I don't know. It's it's small. It's lightweight, but maybe not small enough. But it's neat. Okay. Well, uh, if you find anything neat or uh, interesting or something that you'd like to suggest, questions, hints, thoughts, and or allegations, you can send us some feedback. Indeed, or even things better left unsaid by going over to LinuxGameCast.com. You hit the contact button, you fill the form, just make sure to pick LWDW from the uh, Dropboxy thing. Uh, that's how you get in touch with this particular show. If you want to send some hate mail to LGC Weekly... You can do that, too. It's Indeed, easy. I do believe we had an unsolicited um, game developer send us some of that very same stuff today. Yes, we did. Uh, the fine folks behind Ballistic Overkill sent us uh, three keys. Well, they originally no, no, fairness, only sent we can't two. say fine folks. We're not giving a plug by any means. But they hit us up on Twitter, and I was like, okay, see if you no, can No, no, the folks are fine. The game, I have no idea. I well, uh, it is, here's the it biggest captcha right here. It's like, all right, how many hosts are in the picture? Is that many keys? How many keys are there? <laughs> They sent us two. Okay, that's all I needed. That's all <laughs> I, I wanted send to send. them an email back. It's like, yeah, look, we thank you for the two, but we kind of need one more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, oh, Mike G, he would like some help. I'd love to hear your suggestions on how one can contribute to open source projects, be they Linux distros for other projects or other projects for those who don't program. Documentation, QA help. Love the shows. Ouch. Congrats on the hashtag 175. Well, dollar sign 175. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Pedro is a simple man. Um, listen, if you're just sitting back, I mean, translations, translations, translations. That is one of the biggest things that you don't see. I mean, it's something, you know, if you know multiple languages, I think all three of us know at least two languages. Mm-hmm. All Everyone yeah. would question whether or not we understand English that well. But <laughs> that's just a fact. Have you not been listening? <laughs> <laughs> Another great thing that you can do, and now a lot of people don't consider this because you know, it was like, hey, man, I got like a little donation thing or I got a little Patreon. Kick him a buck. And then it's like, well, it's yeah. just a dollar. But that dollar, like the mental hit from just, you know, four quarters. And we were just saying like from Patreon, we get a new Patreon. It's like a buck. And like, oh, we're going to do that. That adds up. But just knowing that somebody's out there is like, hey, man. I like what you're doing. I would like to help you can do continue doing that. That can help get that person out of bed the next day and that help that project get made. Strider, you yeah, know more about this than me. This is a very good. I mean, I, those are two different types of contributions. So you have the the donation, like the 
financial do donations that you can make. So that's every everyone can do that well, unless you got really no money. But uh, if you really want to help with the project and you don't want to code, then yeah, I mean, first thing, make sure that you don't add more work for the for the maintainers because I mean, for example, if you report issues and it's like not really issues, but feature requests and all that kind of stuff. Instead of, well, it does help, but it also creates more work for the maintainers. So what you want to do is really take off work from them so they, they don't have to deal with that. Uh, documentation is good. Uh, translations, yes. Uh, QA, I mean, all kind of QA, testing on a bunch of distributions. Uh, yeah, just be sure to learn how to write good bug reports, uh, like submit re like really precise information, like with all the stack traces or what distro you're running, uh, all that kind of stuff. And if a bug report is complete, uh, it gets really easy to fix. Yeah, and uh, to go off on what uh, Strider was saying, uh, and to some extent complement what Ben said with the translations, make sure you learn like the platform that they're using for either receiving translations or getting the bug reports or, you know, asking for QA help, as it were, or even the documentation. Make sure you learn the platform itself that they use, because if you... What I'm trying to say here is... Well, what do you say? Are you trying to, to say the best way to leave bug reports for Lutris is to post them in um, Chat Realm Static on our <laughs> <Yes>. website? <laughs> Basically, don't, you know, go on Twitter and send people PMs with bug reports. Don't make new posts on G Plus to say, hey, look, there, there's an issue here. I mean, some people will actually take, like, Google Plus um, posts in, their, uh, in the project-specific communities. They will actually take those posts and assume them as bug reports, that's fine. Just make sure that they want that. Because if they don't want that, they will have, what Strider was saying, they will have more work trying to figure out where the bug reports are and what you were trying to say with them. So just be mindful of the platform that the people are using. And also, just to put a bow on that one, share the project. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter if it's like us, our video, or anything like that, or if it's, you know, Lutris or... Share it. Let people know. And that always boils down to like, well, I have like four people that follow me. Maybe one of those four will just spread it and spread it and spread it. And I mean, it can go crazy and gangbusters. Just help out like that. I mean, it doesn't even cost you a dime to do anything like that. But OK, <laughs> this is from our theory. I know four different people sent this in to me this morning <laughs> before 9 a.m. So that tells me we we'll probably need to talk about the serious news. At the he writes, here's the complete list of serious Fusion 2017 updates featured. Uh, it'll become available in all of the games for free. Split screen there. Decorated had that 64 executable. So Vulcan. All right. We're going to get the Vulcan multi-threaded rendering. It's going to be a oh. thing. Um, just in time for our Patreon goal of coming up on Indeed. Jordan has to play with us in serious Sam three. We're, Pretty much hyper excited about the Vulcan rendering mm -hmm. support because we've seen what that does in our favorite benchmarking in I mean game <laughs> Talos principle. So a bunch yeah, of cool things, but I think the important thing here is well, they also have borderless window support, proper multi monitor support. Oh, okay, that's good. Um, but Steam Workshop support. Yeah, uh, all of the games will be VR compliant because that's the thing people want. And uh, yeah, no, uh, ever, uh, they all will have 64-bit compliance. Uh, they will support Vulkan. They will all be available on Linux, including the VR ones, or at least that's as much as they are implying with that uh, with that post. So that's awesome. That's well, the, really, the really awesome. important thing, I think. Well, two things. Sirius M4 in the works. I know Strider. Yes. I, I can feel Strider vibrating from California <laughs> away just hearing that news. But... All of this will come at the low, low price of free Strider. What do you think? Oh, that's very good news. I mean, they didn't um, say if that included uh, Serious Sam uh, 1 and 2. Well, the two episodes of Serious Sam 1 and the. Uh, well, I know it will minimum start but with it would be a fee. So. 
we we have some Linux version for those games, and we had the the open source version of Series M One uh, last year. But mm -hmm. I would like to have like those Vulkan versions, six, 64 bit uh, Vulkan, all the new uh, updated uh, versions of the, their, their games, especially uh, Series M2, which was never really finished. So if we can get this on Linux, like on, on Steam, that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. Good times. Yeah. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, we are out of time, but we want to thank you for taking a moment and stopping by and enjoying us. If you like us live, you can always see us at uh, youtube.com forward slash Linux Gamecast, twitch.tv forward slash Linux Gamecast. Cut those notifications into the right direction so you'll get notified with that. I do want to point out, if you're watching the video, remember this is also an audio podcast. You can yoink that. Audio listeners, remember if you ever want to see our ugly mugs, we do have the video component on YouTube. But... Oh, and stay tuned for the credits. We have credits for this show now. It's going yes. to be kind of brilliant. Can't tell you about it. But don't want to spoil it. But if you want to scream at me, I'm at Vin Stone on the Twitter Nets plus Vin Stone on G+. I am Peter Mateus. You can find me at Unaccounted4 on Twitter or plus Peter Mateus on Google+. And you can find me on Twitter at, uh, at Strikor and on Google+, plus, plus Mathieu Commandant, and also on Lutris.net. Okay. Patreon.com slash Lutris. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll drill it into them at some point, but we'll see you next week. Beautiful party people. Bye. Come on, give us a wave. Oh, it's so sweet. It's so sweet. So what's in that green shake, man? Um there is uh apples, bananas, uh avocados, uh spinach, li uh, lime juice, uh ginger. Are you trying to kill and yourself? Put some bacon in there. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like cyanide mix? There, there's no cyanide or, or bacon or... Five dudes.